it, it was, we really had fun and it, it was fun showing. This was, this was footage that we've never shown anyone before, so it was the first time we saw it with, with an audience and, and uh, it was really well received. And, and, it, and Annecy is just a, a terrific place to come because people here love animation, they're fans of animation, they're the biggest fans in the world. And so it's, it's a great audience to, to present this material to. Yeah, they know both what's being done now and they have a sense of the history of animation and they, I think they know the other films we've done and they can kind of see it in a, in a broader sort of perspective. So it was a fabulous reaction from them and we'll, we'll find out more as the days unfold, but it seemed great in the, in the house. We loved hearing the response to both to the humorous parts, but then the parts that are meant to intrigue you from a story point of view. It seemed like people were a little caught up in the story, I think, in, even in this venue. So it was, it was very exciting. I love this festival. I've only been here one other time, six years ago, and it's a very international festival. I mean, it isn't obviously just the French, but there are we, just the other day we met with Spaniards and people from Wales and from Brazil, and it draws people from Japan and China, and it is really sort of a, a hub, a meeting place for all these people, and a uh, beautiful setting. Uh, a little less rain would be nice, but, uh, <laughs> but it's, a, it's a wonderful festival, and I think it's unique in the world. Really, there's not another one like this in this beautiful setting, you know, in the city and the lake. It's, it's just yeah, I, uh, gorgeous. I had heard about um, Annecy for many years before yeah. I was able to actually come here and experience it, um, which was about six years ago. And uh, we were always very jealous because we heard about yeah, people, who people came would and come and see tell us pictures, about like, it. And, and oh, we don't get to go. We never yeah, get. But we there. finally got to go, and now we got to go for a second time. And and um, and what everyone said is true. It's yeah. it's just a it's wonderful a environment and and a wonderful place to be. Actually. Um, that's a good question. Um, I think we, we've dealt with many princesses, certainly in the films that we've done, from, from The Little Mermaid and Jasmine, and, and, um, and then uh, from Tiana, Princess and the Frog with Tiana, T Tiana. and I, I think they were all very different. They're, they're very different characters and, and uh, very different personalities, and, and so I think there is no ideal, but, but um, we, we certainly um, um, cared very deeply about all these characters, and, and, um, and in some ways, they, they come to life to us. It's like they, once you start working on these films, and, it, and it's true of Ayana as well, that she, she becomes a real person in, in your mind, and you stop thinking of it as an animated character. Yes, I, I have one daughter in real life. I have two sons and one daughter. And, but these princesses are all like my, our daughters, really. And, you know, and your children are all different. You love all your children for different things, and they're not all the same. So we like the differences between them, and we really try to make them unique and have their own voice and, and their own look and all that. That's, that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Usually when we write a script together, we, uh, Ron is very strong on the structure of the piece and, and the emotion. I'm a little bit more free form improvisation, so I go and I write the same scene ten different ways and he throws eight of them away and picks one that he likes and then rewrites it and, and I rewrite him. We go back and forth and kind of collaborate that way. We both don't do it quite the same way. Yes. On the previous films, we, uh, we would uh, divide the film up and split it up in sequences. On, on, uh, on this film, on Diana, it's, it's a little different because of the process itself being a little different. Um, uh, so we've actually uh, haven't split up the film on this. We've just kind of been uh, been working on the different both parts with all of the, the film together. We ninety animators, which is a lot of animators for us. 90. We actually We've ninety never... who do the acting. They're really like the actors in our movie, and uh, it's quite a few, and it's a lot to keep track of. And uh, but they're they're brilliant. They're really the best in the world, I think, and they've done a fabulous job on the movie. I think uh, there's. I believe that it's a medium that lends itself particularly well to fantasy. I mean, I do feel someone compared the movies we make once to, uh, he, he said, uh, these movies are like tree houses, you know, the house is built in trees. And you, people can go see the movies and they escape into this other world and they see the world they know from a different vantage point. And I've always thought that was a good analogy, that they really, uh, uh, animation, I think we always like with animated films to do something that you, can't do in live action or that you can do uniquely in animation in a way that you can't do in live action. So that's, every one of our films has tried to do this. So I think the spirit of animation really is about making the impossible seem uh, plausible. That's a, an old Disney principle, but I think it's true. Make it seem believable when it 
can't possibly be true, but make people feel it and feel the characters are real. When, when I was a kid, I, I was a huge fan of animation and wanted to work in animation. And I was a huge fan of Disney animation and particularly the features. I loved the Disney animated features and, and I felt as a kid that I loved movies, I loved going to the movies, but to me, the Disney animated films were the highest form of, of movie entertainment. That was like the ultimate. I couldn't wait for, for a new film to arrive. And, and I think it's something about, in a feature length film, when you, um, when you forget the medium and, you, and the, you get involved in the story and the world and the characters, and for an hour and a half, it all becomes sort of this, this magical place that, that is real to you. And then you leave the theater and it's almost like a spell, a spell that was cast on you and then, and then, and then it's over. But, um, but that was the experience that, that, in, that was so inspirational to me. And, and we, we always hope our movies will, will have that same effect. For me, for me, it was Pinocchio. I, I saw Pinocchio when I was nine years old, and I was changed by that movie, and it was after seeing that movie that I felt like I want to work in animation, I want to work for Disney, and that, that became a goal. Yeah, I'd say I, we're the same age. So I saw that movie when I was nine as well. It was profoundly influential. I, uh, the, the sort of first five that Disney did are all, they've never been topped. I mean, Snow White, Pinocchio, Bambi, Fantasia, and Dumbo. Those are sort of the ones that are, are uh, classic. They've got brilliant animation, great stories, worlds yeah. that are created yeah. that are believable. and involving. I also am a big fan of 101 Dalmatians. That's, that's one of my favorites. Very different from Pinocchio, but uh, I think a very compelling story and, and world and tone. Nous sommes ravis d'être au Festival Annecy. Merci beaucoup. Comme elle, comme elle dit. Um, that's my line. <laughs> okay, okay.